Wilhelm Wundt. This man has been credited with being the father of psychology and was ranked first in one survey as being the most important psychologist of all time, ahead of the famed William James and Sigmund Freud. In this video, we're going to find out why. Welcome back to Bear It In Mind. We're beginning a series exploring the different approaches in psychology. In this video, we will focus on the origins of psychology, Wilhelm Wundt and introspection, and the emergence of psychology as a science. Now, I'm about to give a brief introduction and context to this topic for those who are new to psychology, but if you'd like to just jump straight into the details of this video, the timestamps are in the description below. This topic explores what is known as approaches in psychology. By approaches, we just mean some of the main perspectives or categories by which psychologists have tried to explain behaviour. So we're going to explore the behaviourist approach. The work of Ivan Pavlov may ring a bell here. The cognitive approach, with its focus on what we are thinking, our internal mental processes, and how we can study our thoughts. Social learning theory with Bandura's emphasis on the influence of observational learning. The psychodynamic approach with the weird world of Freud and his focus on the role of unconscious forces. The humanistic approach with their focus on free will, the self and growth. The biological approach with their focus on how everything psychological is first biological. Each of these approaches explains human behaviour from a different perspective. In other words, they tend to emphasise particular ideas and explanations that are different from one another. So, for example, behaviourists put the focus on the role of the environment on human behaviour, whereas the biological approach puts the emphasis on the role of internal biological factors, such as genetics and neurotransmitter levels. Having an understanding of these main approaches gives you a good foundation for exploring a range of other topics in psychology and how psychologists go about investigating human behaviour. But, before we dive into each of the approaches, we need to explore in this video the origins of psychology, and specifically the work of Wilhelm Wundt and how psychology emerged as the scientific discipline that it is today. Whenever you mention to someone that you study psychology, you sometimes get some interesting reactions. For example, sometimes people say, I wish I'd had the chance to study that when I was at school. Or more commonly, the moment you mention you study psychology, people take one step back, get all nervous and worried, and say something like, you're probably analysing me right now, aren't you? In fact, do you know what I'm thinking right now? Well, let's look at someone who tried to answer that very question, Wilhelm Wundt. Wilhelm Wundt has been credited with being the father of psychology. Why? Well, at the time when Wundt was around in the 1800s, the field of the mind had mainly been the focus of philosophers such as René Descartes. What Wundt did was to move the study of the mind into the scientific realm. Wundt's background was in physiology, a branch of biology that focuses on the function of different parts of the body. He tried to study the mind in much the same way that biology and chemistry conducted their research using the scientific method. In other words, he tried to separate psychology from philosophy and even from biology into its own category. To do this, Wundt set up the first ever laboratory into experimental psychology designed to study the human mind. This was set up in Leipzig in Germany in 1879. To try to study the mind, specifically conscious experience, Wundt used a technique called introspection. Introspection is conscious examination of conscious experience, basically a form of self-observation of your own thoughts. Importantly, introspection was carried out in the present moment, not a reflection on what had happened in the past. So how would it work? Well, firstly participants would be presented with a stimulus, for example the sound of a metronome, or the turning on of a light. Then secondly, the participants would inspect their own thoughts. The word introspection means looking into. And then they would report back their own emotions, sensations and thoughts that resulted from the sound of the metronome or the turning on of a light. Thirdly, conclusions. Wundt would then compare all the responses from the participants to see what was similar and different about them in order to draw conclusions about the mind. 
Vund carefully conducted the research in a highly controlled and systematic way to ensure that each sensory stimulus was presented in the same way each time to every participant. For example, in one experiment, Vund's participants were asked to report on their sensations when shown a light. Vund ensured that this light was kept the same colour, the same brightness, and on for the same length of time for each participant. By keeping these things the same, or we might say standardised, it enabled Vunt to carefully compare the responses from his participants for any similarities and differences. Vunt wanted to make sure to be able to repeat their experiments using the same conditions each time. This would then enable them to check the reliability of the results they found. In essence, what Vunt was trying to do was move the study of the mind away from the speculation of philosophers and move it into the scientific methods. Now, Vunt's method of introspection does have its limitations. Asking participants to self-report what is going on in their mind through self-observation is highly subjective. There is no way of independently verifying that what they said was going on in their thoughts was actually going on. In fact, in our next video on the behaviorist approach, which I'll link up here, we will see that a famous behaviorist by the name of B.F. Skinner argued that Vunt's introspection wasn't truly scientific because he wasn't studying observable behavior. And if you cannot observe the behavior, then you can't be objective. But more on that in the next video. However, positively, what Vunt did was to provide the starting point for the future of psychology, and hence why Vunt is known as the father of psychology. In fact, Vunt trained 186 graduate students throughout his academic career, 116 of them specialising in psychology. These students went on to other countries in Europe and around the world to develop research into human behaviour and the mind. As one author put it, the foundations were laid for the next generation of psychologists at the turn of the century to develop a truly objective study of mind and behaviour and to apply their own new theories to the treatment of mental disorders. If you're interested, check out this video, I'll also link it up in the cards, on the cognitive approach to see how they developed objective measurements for studying mental processes. So to finish, we can now consider how psychology has emerged from the time of Wilhelm Wundt to the scientific method it is today. Firstly, we have Wundt with his method of introspection, trying to study conscious experience through controlled methods. He went on to write the first textbook on psychology called The Principles of Physiological Psychology. Secondly, in the early 1900s, behaviorism came along and used laboratory methods to objectively measure behavior. For example, B.F. Skinner studied the influence of reward and punishment in the learning of behavior. In fact, he created his own highly controlled box called the Skinner box to ensure he had control over all the variables and could carefully measure through observation the results. Then, in the 1960s, with the dawn of computer technology, came the cognitive approach. Their focus was on studying internal mental processes, such as memory, in a highly scientific way through controlled experiments that could be objectively measured and replicated. Then, with the further development of technology in the 1980s, the biological approach became the most dominant way of studying behaviour and the mind. For example, advances in technology allowed for the study of how genetics may be involved, as well as the role of different brain chemicals and how they can influence human behaviour. And now we come to our own time with cognitive neuroscience. Today we now have a combination of cognitive and biological approaches with the further advancement of brain scanning technology. This allows psychologists to observe participants' brains working in the present moment while they are thinking certain thoughts. Can you imagine explaining to Vunt that in little over a hundred years after his pioneering work, that we would have the technology to watch specific brain structures at work whilst participants are thinking certain thoughts. And that's why he's called the father of psychology. It was his work that led to the development of a scientific way of studying the mind that many have argued led us to where we are today. 
For more information on the different approaches in psychology, check out the description below where you'll find a link to the playlist for all the approaches as well as other helpful information. And if you wanted to watch the first video on the behaviourist approach, you can click on the video on the screen now and it's also linked in the description too. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.